There are a lot of nice things that can be said about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, but in case you're pressed for time, I'm going to start with one that sounds particularly exaggerated, even though it's not. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic really is one of the best things to happen to Star Wars in, in many years. Uh, it's arguably just a, a better uh, Star Wars property than, than the two uh, most recent theatrical films, and, uh, and really it's just a, a fantastic role-playing game all around. Uh, it's developed by BioWare, a company that's already known uh, for developing great role-playing games, uh, although uh, its previous RPGs have all been uh, set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Forgotten Realms, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so this is definitely a change of scenery, uh, but not necessarily a complete change of pace uh, for the Canadian developer, which is uh, definitely in top form here. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic is, is by all means a very true role-playing game. Uh, you can uh, One of the most remarkable things about it is in how it lets you play uh, as uh, you know pretty much whichever type of character you can imagine, uh, whether you know very good or very evil or various shades in between. Uh, character interaction is very, very engaging in this game. You're constantly uh, being charged with uh, making important and uh, meaningful decisions. Um, so you're not relegated to the role of a spectator as you are in, in most uh, console RPGs. Knights of the Old Republic actually takes place thousands of years uh, even before Episode One. Although you wouldn't know it just from playing the game, it, it seems that the Star Wars universe uh, doesn't really change much uh, over the course of millennia. So you'll see some kind of uh, old style weapons. Uh, some characters fight with swords and things like that as opposed to lightsabers. Uh, but generally you'll see a lot of very familiar uh, types of Star Wars stuff. Uh, you'll, uh, you know, talk to uh, job of the hut type guys and, and kind of negotiate uh, bounty, bounty hunting deals and uh, you'll uh, you'll meet up with a bunch of Twi'leks who are the guys with the big uh, tentacles on their heads and, and um, Rodians like Greedo and uh, basically a lot of familiar Star Wars sights and sounds are in this game and, and the game does a very good job at uh, you know being consistent uh, with the films and, and presenting this stuff. Uh, alien creatures even speak in their kind of native alien languages and sound uh, much like they do in the movies and, and uh, these sorts of things really help uh, give the game the feel of Star Wars as opposed to you know some generic science fiction game. This is by all means an adventure of epic proportions. Uh, it, it starts off, you, you know, pretty, pretty simple. You barely manage to escape from a ship uh, that's come under attack by the Sith, and, and you crash land on a Sith quarantined planet, and your first order of business is just uh, trying to find a means of escape uh, from, from this planet that's uh, kind of in the Sith's stranglehold. Uh, you're, you're part of the Republic. You're trying to overthrow this force that's been encroaching on Republic space and trying to figure out how the Sith uh, have managed to, you know, uh, get this huge fleet of starships seemingly out of nowhere. What's their, what's their big dark secret? Once you find a way off the starting planet, then the game really opens up, and uh, soon enough you'll, you'll have this big quest that sends you to numerous uh, different Star Wars worlds. You'll go everywhere from Tatooine, the desert planet, to Kashyyyk, the kind of uh, woodsy homeland of the Wookiees, and uh, a bunch of places in between. Uh, looking for these certain ancient artifacts and uh, meeting new people along the way. Uh, you'll gain up to nine uh, party members who will join you. You can travel with up to two of them at any given time, and each of these characters has his or her own or its own story, and uh, you know you can travel with these characters as you see fit. Uh, th there's just a lot to see and do in this game. Uh, you'll you'll find characters, you know, requesting that you resolve disputes for them. Uh, you'll, you'll get to take sides in conflicts and then, you, you know, find a cure to a deadly disease and uh, basically settle a whole bunch of uh, different situations or just uh, inter intervene in situations where, you know, you might be able to help out or hinder. And really that's the big thing about Knights of the Old Republic. You can uh, choose to be good or evil and uh, when you eventually become a Jedi and uh, that's really not uh, much of a spoiler. It's, it's pretty obvious that you gain for force powers at some point in the game. Uh, sure enough, uh, you're constantly faced with you know, being able to use your force powers for good or for evil. Uh, in, in dialogue, you pretty much always have uh, choices that either uh, you know, will be morally good or evil, and, and your character will gain affinity toward the light side or the dark side of the force as you do these things. 
You couldn't tell at a glance, but Knights of the Old Republic actually plays very similarly to last year's Neverwinter Nights. Uh, the, the key difference is mostly superficial. Instead of having uh, the isometric perspective of Bioware's previous RPGs, instead this game looks like a third-person action adventure. The camera follows the main character around. Uh, combat also looks very dynamic. Uh, you'll see characters kind of dodging each other and and uh, performing a variety of different attack moves. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have a direct involvement in the action. In, in fact, you don't. Uh, really what's going on is uh, that uh, there's a system very similar to third edition Dungeons and Dragons at work here. Uh, so, you know, whether or not you hit an opponent is determined by a two-hit roll and uh, you know, various bonuses depending on your character's level and things like that. Uh, it's pretty much all automated and, and statistical and, and uh, somewhat strategic. Uh, you could have up to three characters in your party in the battle. Um, and, um, you know, your, your job in the, in the fight is just to make sure everyone's staying alive so you can use your healing kits and stuff like that if someone's injured. But uh, generally your, your party members will uh, do their own thing just fine and will uh, attack all nearby opponents. And uh, you can sit back and watch what happens or take a more active role and uh, pause at any time and issue orders, things like that. Uh, so the combat is, is just one part of Knights of the Old Republic and, and it's handled pretty well. Uh, it looks impressive, especially the lightsaber duels. Um, and, and the third edition style D&D uh, &D rules actually do a pretty good job of, of uh, making this uh, feel like Star Wars. Uh, basically, Jedi characters uh, seem really, really powerful in the game. Uh, they can deflect uh, blaster bolts uh, with, their, with their lightsabers and can uh, chop people up real good and um, basically use their powers to defeat, uh, you know, very large uh, parties of enemy characters, stuff like that. Uh, the, the combat is a pretty major part of the game. Uh, even if you play as a character who tries to talk his way out of situations, you'll still invariably get into some pretty big fights. Uh, but the combat is, is uh, entertaining to watch, uh, entertaining to be a part of, and, and uh, is handled quite well. Knights of the Old Republic is a long game. It'll take you like uh, 40 hours to play through start to finish, uh, give or take some. Uh, there, are, there are a whole lot of optional side quests, and then uh, there's plenty of replay value on top of that. You can start the whole game over as a different type of character, you know, picking different dialogue options, uh, traveling with different companions, and you'll have, you know, a, a substantially different experience in turn uh, as you play through the game. Um, it's, it's really uh, quite impressive how, how much uh, depth and how many kind of peripheral things uh, there are in the game uh, and and there's just no chance that you'll see everything the first time through even though you'll see a whole lot. The game's graphics are a little bit spotty. Uh, the character models look pretty good and you'll see them uh, making facial expressions and stuff like that in dialogue. Uh, they try to lip sync but it doesn't look totally convincing. Um, uh, but really the, the main issue with, with the graphics is that the frame rate is pretty inconsistent. It can stutter pretty noticeably during combat. Uh, and also the in-engine cutscenes that the game uh, sometimes and uh, thankfully not often uh, uses to advance the storyline actually look pretty bad. Uh, they, they look pretty stilted and, and stuff like that. But you know, generally when you're just running around and exploring the environments in the game, meeting the different characters, uh, the game looks great. It, it really looks quite good and uh, perhaps most importantly the lightsabers uh, just look spot on. They, they look exactly like they do in the movies and uh, clearly the, uh, the great fight scene towards the end of Star Wars Episode One really influenced uh, how the lightsaber battles look in this game. On the other hand, the audio is definitely one of the highlights of Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, in particular, the speech in the game is, is just really well done, and, and there is an incredible amount of it to boot. Uh, all the dialogue in the game is in full speech. I have no idea how many hours of dialogue uh, this must be. Uh, it's a whole lot. And, you know, again, this is a 40-hour game. Uh, much of which is spent in conversation, and then, um, you know, much of that conversation, most of that conversation, you won't even hear on your first time through since, uh, you know, since you'll get different responses out of characters depending on what you say. The aliens also speak in their native languages, though you'll start to notice that some of the alien dialogue does repeat. Uh, you'll, you'll just uh, get an ear for it after a while and kind of uh, maybe start to learn uh, a bit of Wookiee or something over the course of the game. 
The sound effects themselves are pretty typical of Star Wars, but Bioware deserves credit for, for not just going with the kind of ubiquitous John Williams soundtrack for the musical score. Uh, it's great and everything, but we've all heard it a bazillion times before, and instead Knights of the Old Republic has an original musical score for the most part that sounds consistent with kind of the orchestral Star Wars sound and uh, kind of plays quietly in the background. So it's true that you could level a few criticisms at Knights of the Old Republic and how not all the graphics uh, look totally great and, and some aspects of the story you know, don't, don't seem perfectly plausible or something like that. But by and large, this game is just extremely well done and, and presents you know, about as satisfying of a Star Wars role-playing experience as you could probably imagine. Uh, there's just so much to see and to do in the game and uh, you truly feel a sense of freedom in uh, you know, uh, having your character go about different tasks differently. You don't just have to be good or have to be evil. You could be shades of gray and, you know, uh, depending on how you're feeling at the time, you, you choose, choose different options uh, that, that best suit you. And the whole theme of the game is about how, you know, Jedi are constantly in, in danger of falling to the dark side. And it works out really perfectly with the gameplay that, uh, that you're constantly uh, faced with these uh, really tempting uh, and kind of devilish dialogue options that, that most games really wouldn't dare give you. You know, mug an old man for his money, uh, things like that. Uh, you wouldn't expect this kind of behavior out of a Star Wars character, but this game lets you do it if, if you really want to. And If you're looking for a role-playing game for your Xbox, this uh, really is an obvious choice. Uh, likewise, if you're looking for a Star Wars game, but perhaps the best thing to be said about this game is that even if you're not or, or don't consider yourself to be a big fan of Star Wars or of role-playing games, that uh, playing Knights of the Old Republic, uh, you will more than likely appreciate this game's uh, really obviously good qualities and, and just the... Uh, obvious and, and sheer amount of effort and, and talent and work that went into this game. Uh, it, it's just really an impressive experience uh, by and large and, and uh, is easily recommendable to anyone who has an Xbox and uh, even to those uh, still on the fence on uh, whether or not to get the system.